Hello guys, welcome to An Academy. So this is the daily analysis of the Hindu, uh, and today is eleventh of January, twenty seventeen. Presented to you by me, uh, Dipanchu Singh. And uh, if you wish to read more about me, you can go through this slide. You can also follow me in An Academy on this link. But please uh, rate and review the course and recommend each and every video so that uh, we'll get to know that uh, whether you like that today's video or not. And do pitch in your suggestions in the comment sections or on the review sections of the course. So practice question for today and do attempt it and I mention your answers in the comment sections below and also uh, the answer for yesterday's question was China that satellites were both of them remote sensing uh, satellites were uh, launched by China. So the national page news is that Supreme Court has ordered audit of 30 lakh of NGOs. Uh, so they are basically because there was an issue from the intelligence uh, agencies that uh, the funds uh, the foreign funding received in these NGOs are being misused. Uh, for uh, you know anti-India operations or you know anti-establishment operations and anti-establishment protest, so NGOs are basically a very strong medium of black money circulation as well. So those who receive the public money, uh, you know, they basically launder uh, uh, with, and with due to an excess. And uh, this the the funds uh, which are received internationally are also regulated under the FCRA. So this was very much in news in past few weeks. So recently uh, there was a news about that Compassion India an NGO was uh, you know, uh, from uh, from America, uh, which was a news whose rights, uh, whose license uh, was cancelled, and therefore uh, there was a strong diplomatic push from America uh, in allowing India to you know uh, to uh, for allowing uh, Compassion uh, International uh, to continue with their operations. So what are FCRA and what is the FCRA rule? So FCRA it was enacted in 2010 by the Parliament to consolidate the laws. Uh, regulate to regulate the steps and acceptance and utilization of foreign contributions so basically uh, there are certain guidelines by which uh, the the uh, you know the ngos and in, in organizations need to comply with uh, these are under the ministry of home affairs and they need to basically report to what all funds are they have received and uh, how are they using this fund in day to day administration as well so these all things have to be reported under the fcra norms and uh, Effect of endosulfan uh, will cause devastation, says Supreme Court. So actually, it has directed Kerala government to release entire uh, compensation uh, to the affected families, uh, mostly newborns, because Chief Justice of India has said that the state of Kerala, uh, Kerala uh, can initiate the process to recover compensation money uh, from the pesticide company, which was responsible for uh, production and seal of cheap uh, agri uh, agrochemical, that is the endosulfan. It is not, in fact, if you know that the endosulfan is not only banned in Kerala and in Karnataka, it, it's uh, also uh, has a wide uh, range of health impacts, uh, in, especially if you look at the Dakshin Karnataka districts where endosulfan was eerily uh, sprayed on cashew plantations. So these all are eerily sprayed by planes or even uh, they are eerily sprayed by the machines uh, in, on the crops to prevent uh, from uh, pests and insects. And it is, uh, we look at the property of endosulfan, it is an organochloride insecticide. It, it is basically a colorless solid and it has emerged as a highly controversial agrochemical uh, due to, because it has a acute uh, toxic, uh, toxicity uh, which affects the endocrine system, that is the gland system, which uh, the ductless gland system which uh, controls our hormones and then potential for bioaccumulation, that bioaccumulation, bio uh, remediation and, uh, you know, uh, these all concepts you need to uh, understand what is the difference between biomagnification and bioaccumulation. So do let me know in the comment sections below uh, what is the difference between bioaccumulation and biomagnification. And in fact, uh, bioconcentration, there are three concepts, bioaccumulation, uh, biomagnification and bioconcentration. So do let me know in the comment sections what do you know about these uh, concepts. And even endosulfan is used in a, is an insecticide on a variety of crops including many fruit crops such as teas, grains and I've already told you cashews. And uh, Mohammed Yunus, uh, who received Nobel Peace Prize in 2006 for, for his efforts to create economic and social development in Bangladesh, has uh, asked uh, that you know uh, the government should set up uh, banks for the poor and initiate uh, Grameen um, uh, similar uh, ways of banks like uh, which was done from, uh, by him, uh, that is the Grameen banks, for uplifting poor sections of society and increase the financial inclusion. The next uh, bit of news is about the election commission has started screening of government ads as the model code of conduct has already come into effect with the announcement of elections, uh, the election dates in the five poll bound states. So the, the commission has also, re also reiterated that the government funded ads uh, which publicize the achievement of political parties and uh, functionaries, they actually violate the MCC. So basically these are orders you need to uh, you know uh, be aware of and you also need to be aware about uh, the particular cases that is the Abhiram Singh versus Sidi Kamanchan judgment on uh, which was on the uh, you know uh, uh, attracting a penalty and violation uh, if you uh, if you ask for votes on the basis of religion. This was the recent case on which we had covered certain bit of news and editorials and uh, it, it, with respect to moral code of conduct no uh, political party especially which is in power can use the government machinery for its advantage uh, and use uh, you know the government machinery for its advantage uh, for you know getting some sort of benefit in the polls. So it has also issued a stir warning in poll bond states again making statement which could uh, trigger disharmony. I've already told you about uh, this particular judgment. 
and uh, the next one is that a lot of uh, political uh, will holds india's biggest project that is by david gross uh, the statement is by david gross who is the physicist and 2004 nobel laureate so according to him india is not moving fast enough uh, on major scientific projects because of legal and political uh, delays bureaucratization red tapeism and it also he also said that uh, there is already a stalled underground neutrino, neutrino observatory project Uh, which was proposed to come in Tamil Nadu, uh, but it's, it's also pending environmental uh, green, green, clear, uh, green clearance. And uh, he also mentioned that the Indigo project, uh, which was given clearance uh, only after the gravitational waves were discovered, and said that, that India has to go beyond this minor role and need to come a big on the world stage as a big science uh, project, you know, and and participate in a leading role. So uh, the next bit of news is about the business page. So India has actually opposed the inclusion of new issue at uh, at WTO. So ahead of a special meeting of trade ministers on the sidelines of the forthcoming uh, Davos meet, that is the World Economic Forum's meet, India has actually opposed some of the attempts by some developed nations to introduce new issues, which include e-commerce investment into the formal agenda of the WTO. So on earlier occasions as well, there have been issues with the new, you know, uh, uh, market access by uh, developed countries uh, in, in developing nations, and there's already the Doha Round Summit going on. and all in uh, you know india also rejected previously the attempts on the of the developed uh, uh, world to make and uh, such new issues uh, part of the ongoing doha round that i've already told you and the world economic forum the detail about that is that it's uh, scheduled uh, to to be uh, to take place uh, between january 17th and 20th and uh, women jalan who uh, uh, has said that rbi's autonomy needs to be maintained so earlier uh, there was governor vivi reddy said that for a central bank reputational risk is the worst risk so there were have been news in fact they, this was this was a news previously uh, that uh, the public accounts committee has uh, uh, sent some questionnaires to the rbi governor regarding their role in demonetization and doing flip flops on their on their decisions so another former governor said that uh, the autonomy of the rbi that is very fundamental fact and therefore it needs to be maintained so we need to maintain the autonomy and accountability of our uh, you know institutions such as the R, uh, the rbi sebi and the controller and auditor general so this can be looked into uh, the light of uh, this particular issue that whether you know uh, it's necessary uh, to provide accountability and uh, and autonomy to these uh, regulatory institutions of government of india and uh, what issues are there uh, you know, if we, if we try and uh, you know if the government tries to you know break that autonomy and tries to influence their decisions the next uh, and the last bit of news is about the international news so actually there was not much in today's uh, newspapers uh, specifically in the news related to hindu summaries but then uh, we have already had a lot of articles which i have already covered uh, in the editorial analysis for today so do watch that video and uh, do watch this video combined as well so you'll get the whole analysis of the hindu as well as the editorial analysis of all the paper all the newspapers so the international news is that the china has deepened military ties with malaysia so a chinese submarine has already docked at the port of malaysia for the first time this has happened for the first time and who is already a partner with china on the maritime silk route so this is uh, uh, you know uh, the proposed uh, map of china's maritime silk route this is in uh, uh, context with malaysia and here you can see calicut uh, is mentioned uh, in india so um, uh, maritime silk route is basically a part of china's belt and road initiative and uh, submarine docking is seen as a high degree of uh, mutual trust and emerging uh, special ties if you remember there was an issue of uh, submarine docking chinese submarine docking at the hambantota port in sri lanka and also in the karachi port of pakistan so which is causing a issue in new delhi and raising some security concerns in the indian ocean region and it, which has obviously irked the indian navy and the security establishment in india so uh, guys i this uh, i guess this is it for today's video and uh, do let us know your suggestions in the comment sections below also uh, there was not much in the news today so for the whole uh, complete editorial analysis do watch the video on editorial analysis of newspapers where we'll be covering the editorials of the hindu and other major newspapers so thank you so much and have a good day